Hi, I'm Bob Rankin. I've been working on a painting dealing with scuba diving that's called my Fiji Fish Series. About 20 years ago, I went for my first major open water dive in Fiji, and it was one of the most exhilarating experiences that I've ever worked in, that I've ever done, and, and it's been very inspirational in my work. I came back and I decided, how can I possibly try to capture the essence of that dive? The fact that you have this beautiful coral life, you have huge walls, vertical walls of nothing but coral, living coral. Uh, and so I started to think, I think I'll first start with a sculpture. That's when I use this modeling paste to build it up that I've shown you in another uh, one of these videos. And then I've come back in and I've showed you how to do this wonderful color blend going from light to dark. Now I'm going to show you the final part of that where we're going to actually paint the coral. Now, the real solution to this is to have the correct tool. And this co the tool in this case is, for me, Bob Rankin's Big Bad Brush. And it just holds paint beautifully. It, it really presents itself in a nice way in terms of covering large areas in a very short period of time. I really depend on covering large areas so that I can really push that paint around the surface and really make it work to my advantage. Now I'm going to be working from top to bottom here and I'm just going to be using several different color theories. One is to work with warm against cool colors, cool against warm colors, and having some neutrals in there to make sure that they all work in together. So with this brush you can really push the paint around beautifully. You can really move it. You can use the edge of it. You can create all sorts of different shapes and patterns just by barely touching that surface like that. You can create this essence of like a dripping coral right there. And because of the way that I've loaded up the paintbrush where I have a combination of blue and white on it, it will lend itself to create the illusion of three-dimensional coral. In addition to that, if I'm working with a light value there, the next value down, I might just bring in a little bit darker value. And since I'm working with a lot of coral-like colors, meaning that they're jewel tones, in this case I'm bringing in some of the dioxine purple. And again, I've loaded the brush up with not only purple, but with white, with purple, with green, with turquoise, and I let the brush do the magic itself. Areas going out towards the edge, I'm going to want to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to blend that in to create even more depth. Again, working light against dark, warm against cool, and that combination will create a lot of depth for you. Now I'm going to keep turning this canvas around as I'm working. Since this is a two and a half inch deep canvas, I want to make sure that I'm coating the sides as well. I haven't brought any warm tones in here, so now I'm bringing in some yellow in with this turquoise. Let's see what happens with that. I've got this really cool color for the background, and I want something to respond to that on top of it. So with that, I'm bringing in yellow, I'm bringing in white, I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of this hot pink, and see what I can do just by changing the way that I treat the brush. Instead of stroking back and forth, I'm just barely dabbing it. And oftentimes this coral life looks just like that, like it's been dabbed on by a paintbrush. Again, I want to have warm against dark, uh, school, excuse me, warm against cool, light against dark. So towards the outside edge here, I'm going to let it go much, much darker. In most canvases, when I'm working, I'm working from top to bottom. It's just much easier, works a lot better. I don't like this transition here, it's too awkward. So I'm going to go back in, work in with a neutral color on top of that, see what I can do to help blend that in. That's much better. Let's try some really warm colors now.
Again, making sure that I have the right amount of water to paint so it's the same consistency. There's a nice neutral color. Let's see what happens when we bring some purple in here to add even more contrast. That's nice against that neutral. Again, changing the amount of pressure that I'm applying to the paint. At times, I'm really digging into the surface. At other times, I'm just barely touching it. What would happen if we came back in with some hot pink just on the edge of the brush? And here you can see that within that brush, because it's so wide and so substantial, it can hold a lot of paint. So then I'm just going to use the tip of that to isolate it and to highlight those individual parts of the coral. That's starting to work nicely. And then coming back in, always remembering that this is all underwater, so bringing back in and reacting to some of that natural water color. And again, this is an entirely different type of paintbrush stroke. It's more of a dabbing motion. At the top, since the coral is going to be receiving more light, I'm going to bring in some lighter values. Now that's the preliminary tones and what I'll do after this is I'll go back in, I'll stand it up, I'll let it set up a little bit, let it dry out a little bit and then determine where I really need to highlight it. For example, we can go ahead and just highlight one of these areas. Since I've done primarily most of the neutrals, now it's a good time to come back in and really hit it with some colors that are going to pop. What happens if I use this really intense purple? We'll see. We'll just try it up here at the top changing the direction of the brush, create an entirely different texture, surface on it, where I have the lighter value underneath this time, then coming back in with a little bit darker value, and that seems to create a real nice fan curl. This is Bob Rankin. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks.